Hello everyone, uh, we are Team Phoenix and we will be presenting our project on CD system and segmentation for dental care. Now, our main focus of this project is to generate a 3D dental system and to, uh, and to uh, issue and to actually focus on the issues that the current dental images uh, face. Now, for the presentation overview, first we'll be talking about the background and the problem statement in detail. Later on, we would be uh, going more into detail about the process and the techniques that we have used to achieve our goal. And also, uh, we'll be showcasing our results and ending with a uh, future scope. So uh, modern dental imaging has undergone significant changes due to technological advancements. However, there are still certain issues that persist. Today, I'll be talking about one particular uh, imaging technique that is called CBCT, cone beam computer tomography. So with CBCT, uh, there are two issues mainly. The first issue is that it lacks spatial resolution uh, to actually uh, depict the tooth geometry. And the second is that it suffers from image noise which makes it difficult to actually uh, precisely find out the tooth details and its surface. Now, uh, our idea is to generate a 3D model, which can be refined in the future and which dentists can use to actually perform an accurate and more detailed diagnosis. Now, we have worked with these CBCT images in a DICOM format to perform certain uh, analysis such as tooth segmentation and tooth decay analysis. So what is DICOM? DICOM, uh, it is an internationally accepted standard, uh, which stands for digital imaging and communication in medicine. So it is used to store, exchange, transmit, and view medical images. Now, DICOM basically consists of two parts. First is the header, and the next is the image itself. The header consists of patient's information, such as their name, date of birth, age, and so on. And the actual image is generated using a technology such as CBCT, as I explained previously. Now, uh, next. yeah, so to formally define our problem, we aim to utilize uh, uh, computer vision technique to generate a 3D dental system to address the issues that I've spoken about before and to also perform certain uh, analysis such as tooth segmentation and tooth decay analysis. Uh, these I would be continuing in detail about the process that we have used. So, so our project is divided into two parts, visualization and segmentation. We introduce the simplified workflow with geometric transformation, such as the sampling and points out generation for 3D visualization of the DICOM data. And then we utilize feature and detection techniques, such as clustering, uh, to showcase the applications of tooth segmentation and DK analysis. So uh, Coming to the visualization part of the project, we first load the dental DICOM stack containing approximately 600 images to a list so that we can read and manipulate as needed. Then we next analyze the voxel values in the images after converting them into pound speed scale, which is a quantitative uh, scale to describe uh, radio density within the images. And while we were observing our HU values of the images, we realized that we would have to perform some thresholding so that we can clean the data. So hence, uh, we visualized the 2D images in a stack of the DICOM data to investigate and understand the images better. Then to finally display the data in 3D form, it was helpful to ensure that each voxel represents this one into one into one mm of the data. So we performed the sampling by interpolation. And then we generated the point cloud of, from this resample uh, image to, uh, to uh, visualize the CBCT diagram in 3D. So uh, a single diagram layer uh, does not contain enough information to uh, visualize the uh, 3D structure. So as every layer, uh, diagram layer has some associated depth with it, it becomes uh, absolutely necessary to stack multiple layers over each other. So here on the right hand side, uh, we can see the subplots and the generative mm -hmm. transformation of uh, how multiple layers are stacked over each other and in turn giving us the progressive information of how uh, uh, in general the images, dental images are generated. So we use the library within Python called as PyDICOM uh, to help us read the uh, files in the DICOM format. We uh, then start to uh, read the files from uh, starting from layer number 10 in the first subplot as you can see. 
And then we have sampled every 12th layer from the DICOM uh, data stack. So in order to generate uh, the stack of the uh, resulting DICOM images. So this way you can see how we tend to get more useful information uh, uh, after every iteration of the segmentation. So now you must be wondering what information does the table contain? Well, uh, as Lisa previously explained, uh, it is just the standardized unit of measurement of uh, a material medium in the DICOM stack. It is called as the Hounsfield unit. So this quantitative measurement is uh, extremely helpful in determining the material medium uh, within the dental cavity. For example, like uh, from our analysis, uh, we have found uh, that the majority of the uh, material medium in our case is uh, air, which is uh, as expected. So, all right, we now have the two dimensional uh, stacked images over each other, but the main aim of our project was to visualize the three 3D reconstructed uh, dental images uh, so that we could further analyze it uh, clearly. So to achieve this, we created a meshed image and defined the size of each voxel. A voxel is basically a 3D representation of pixel. And then we defined a particular threshold for generating the mesh. So after generating the threshold, we used uh, triangulation techniques to generate the 3D representation. Uh, from the video, you can see that the mesh 3D model, which uses the vertices generated by the mesh is uh, created using the uh, point cloud. Here we can see that uh, the resulting point cloud is not as refined as it as refined as it uh, contains uh, much uh, unnecessary information such as bones, muscles, uh, tissues, etc. And hence, we need to do more processing on it to segment out tooth information and carry out further analysis of tooth detail. So to discuss this further, I'll again hand over uh, the mic to Lisa. Yeah, so to address the uh, question of segmenting tooth information and exploring the application for tooth detail analysis, we first perform clustering to identify and locate different groups of information, such as bones, muscles, air, or holes. And then we explored uh, two clustering techniques, K-mean and mean shift, and to compare the results. So after grouping the images into different clusters, we threshold out the bone class and uh, that we previously, on the previously resampled DICOM images, for tooth segmentation and for tooth detail analysis, we perform opening and closing using erosion dilation to remove any tiny uh, features like overlapping gums on the muscles or the noise from the imaging uh, to get a clarity. Then we create a mask out of these cluster data to segregate, uh, to sorry, lay the groundwork for analysis. So first we perform the segmentation to clean the visualization and look at only uh, bones in the DICOM data. We use K-means clustering technique with number of clusters defined as nine. So we found all the values for each cluster and computed their mean value in the HU standard. And after observing the cluster output, we decided on a threshold range. So if you look at the rightmost uh, nine grid that we have, which looks at the nine clusters that we were able to isolate, uh, all the HU values between 1400 to 2400, they kind of, they contain that the bones of the, the tooth move. So what we did was like we got the mask for those points within that range. And this was done for every slice of the resampled stuff. So the mask values for each slice were then joined to get our 3D visualization. So here again, you can see the two differences. The one on the left uh, showcases the before, um, the re, uh, before the thresholding and clustering. And on the right, you can see how it is cleaner and we can just see the uh, tooth part of the image. So this was the result of the point cloud that was generated after the uh, clustering and the segmentation that we performed. Uh, the second is the example uh, for our second data that we had. So on the left is the image that we showed previously after generating our visualization for the DICOM. And on the right, what you see is the segmentation of the, the tooth segmentation that we performed using clustering. So we were able to clean out the tooth geometry and now it's clearer to see and perform like uh, any kind of detail analysis that we would want to perform on it. Okay, so let's move on to the second part of the segmentation. Here, we basically want to do um, the cavities analysis by use of the segmentation technologies. Um, let me first introduce the algorithm here. By giving a 2D binary image, we first denoise by using closing and opening we learned in the class. 
And then we normalize the image by um, moving the mean at the original point. Um, then we identify a proper threshold by applying machine learning technologies. Basically, we choose to use k-means clustering and mean shape clustering. And after got the machine learning results, we can label each distinct direction differently. And by using those bounding box, we are able to identify which parts are potential cavities. And finally, we um, create a mask of that and apply the mask to the original image. You can see here is a result of one single image. And um, there are several things need to be noticed here. The first thing is that um, initially we use the like two cluster k-means because we basically just want to separate the house part with the unhealthy part. So, but you can see that the result on the left, uh, which is better performed than the result on the right, which used the mean shape clustering. Um, the mean shape clustering identifies more holes and also for um, different color labels, it also have more objects here. And the second thing worth mentioning is that um, even though we use the same number of clustering, which is 17, which is a result of the mean shape clustering, uh, mean shape clustering algorithm still outperforms. As you can see that in the middle image, um, the right circle on the uh, top, it identifies parts of the gum to be like the uh, cavities, which is not. So we can know that um, the mean shape clustering is a better performed algorithm. But also one thing we need to be noticed is that um, mean shift clustering has a higher computational cost. For a single image, it takes 27 seconds to process the single image clustering, while um, for the k-mean, even with the same number of clustering, it only takes less than one second. So if you are looking for accuracy, definitely go to the um, mean shift clustering. But if you want some time efficiency, um, you can choose k-means. And for the next slide, um, so in conclusion, we were able to achieve the two goals we identified from our original problem statement. First, we improved the uh, spatial resolution of the dental imagery through um, simplified 3D visualization technique. And we also explore applications of 2CK analyzed using segmentation and techniques. Um, also, we believe that we would also like to refine our post segmentation visualization and integrate 2CK analysis analysis in 3D for biotech diagnosis. Um, we also believe that the project can be expanded to combine multiple dental images and to achieve a better result of that. So our uh, thing is that we also made our uh, repo public available for anybody who would want to explore and experiment with this application. So please feel free to check it out. And thank you for listening to our presentation. Please feel free to ask any questions you have.